Today we're doing the blue ice hike on the Nigashbren Glacier. We chose to do the short blue ice hike, which takes about four hours. There are shorter and longer options depending on what you want to get out of the day. We thought four hours was just perfect. The meeting place for the hike is in a car park that already gives you a great view of the glacier. From there you get your gear, meet your guide, and then jump on a boat for a short trip over to the foot of the glacier where you start a hike up towards where the start of the ice is, which is about one kilometre or three quarters of a mile away. You need to be careful because it's very slippery and you don't have your cleats on yet. So the one hour hike up to the start of the glacier is uh, not that exciting. You get some nice mountain views, uh, plenty of waterfalls, an increasing elevated point back over the fjord. And, uh, we're now getting to the exciting part. Once you get to the foot of the ice, it's time to put the cleats on your feet so you can get a good grip on the ice and to have your ice axe ready to go and in your hand at all time. You will use this as a stabiliser and kind of a walking stick as you make your way up and down the glacier. This is also where they tie you to everyone else in the group. So if one person falls over, the theory is that the group will stop them. Assuming you don't all slip over at the same time. But the pitch of the glacier is fairly mild. So as long as you're walking steady and don't do anything stupid, you'll be fine. Yeah. How are you coping so far, darling? Um, it's good, it's cold, but I'm yeah. not cold. It's much colder when you hit the ice. Yeah, but you keep moving, so you're not that, like you're not cold. cold. Ready to go. While the glacier is not particularly steep, there are some fairly menacing cracks and crevasses there. You don't get much of a chance to look down them, but you don't really want to go near them anyway. At times it can be slow going, which gets a little bit frustrating because there's so many different groups on the ice and you do spend a bit of time waiting around. But overall it's not too bad. Most of the guides have grown up in the area and are very knowledgeable about the glacier, its history, and they do their best to make it really informative while you're up there. This is where we reached our turnaround point. You get a great view straight up the glacier and you can see around a corner that is hidden from view as you make your way up the mountain. It's at this point that you wish you were on one of the longer hikes so you could see what's up there. You also get some time to eat lunch. We opted for the package that included a packed lunch and uh, we don't recommend it. The audio on the glacier was terrible, but the gist of my food review here is that the bun was hard as cement. You'll be far better off just taking a few light snacks and you can save your energy for the glacier rather than chewing. As we descended down the glacier, we took a detour to the Blue Ice Cave. Now what you see in the video here is constantly changing. So the day you visit, it will be completely different. <laughs> I'm sure you now know what I meant by the poor audio on the glacier. It was now time to take one last look at the top of the glacier, take a few last minute photos and start heading down. But there was one more surprise in store for us as we got to the base. There was a big open mouth at the foot of the glacier where all the melted water was running off into the lake below. This was the highlight of the day for me. The big archway and all the deep blue colors underneath and on top of it, plus the rumble of the water coming down the mountain I thought was a very special thing to see. And with that, we jumped back in the car and headed towards the town of Olden, where we stayed at what I think is the greatest roadside motel on the planet, at least that we've seen so far. Check out our full Norway road trip video for more on that. It is an absolutely beautiful part of the world. Thanks for watching.